Hello and welcome to this second session on data-driven analysis. In this part, we'll be talking about the text clustering node. Now, as we've mentioned before, one of our main goals with data-driven analysis is to explore our data and get an overview of the overall themes in our data set. And another text analysis tool that we can use to explore and uh, understand our data is text clustering. So the text clustering node in Polyanalyst uses natural language processing and machine learning to identify clusters of words or phrases in the data set. And this is very useful when you're trying to explore unstructured text data because it helps us identify potential topics or categories that we can use in the analyst-driven analysis stage. It's also useful for classification by helping us organize text into a uh, categorization schema. So let's now go ahead and get some hands-on practice with the text clustering node. For this hands-on practice section, we will continue working with our hotel reviews data set, and we'll try to identify some higher level topics using the text clustering node. So let's find the text clustering node in the node panel. Now that our node is in the workflow, we'll connect it to the keyword extraction node since we want to identify the higher level topics that include the keywords we already found in the data set. Now that our node is connected, we'll go ahead and execute it. Now let's open the node and take a look at the keyword clusters that the node has identified. So when we open the node, we see a report that displays the uh, discovered clusters and statistics for each cluster, a panel with information about the keywords in the clusters, and a drill down panel to explore the documents that belong to each cluster. So our node has identified 18 clusters. And for each cluster, we have the uh, support value, or in other words, how many records were predicted to belong in that cluster. And each of the clusters are named according to the top keywords or predictors contained in that cluster. So let's take a look at the predictors of the second cluster here. So when we click on a cluster, we can see all the keywords that are predictors for that cluster. And for each keyword, we have their part of speech label. For example, here we have nouns and adjectives, which was our selection for the identified keywords in the keyword extraction node. And we also have the significance and support values. So we can sort or um, filter our keywords based on those statistics. And once we click on a keyword, we can use the drill down panel on the right to see the records where those keywords occurred. Now, even though we can see some higher level themes emerging from the current clusters we have, we might want to refine them a little more. Ideally, we'd like to see fewer clusters and only nouns as our predictors. So this means we'll need to configure the properties of the node. Now, once we open our properties, we'll click on the options tab. Now, the first option at the top is the method of clustering. And we have two methods available, probabilistic latent semantic analysis, or PLSA, and k-means. Now, we won't go into the mathematical details of these models right now, but a simple way of understanding how to use these in practice is the following. The PLSA method is preferred when the topic distribution is small, or in other words, when we know that there's a limited number of possible topics in our data set. On the other hand, the k-means method is preferred when our data set is very diverse and has many possible topics. Now, since we're working with a data set that has a fairly limited number of topics, we'll just keep the default PLSA method. Next, we can define our cluster number. We'll keep the minimum as it is since we want to have at least two clusters identified. 
but let's go ahead and change the maximum from 30 to 10. Next, we'll go to the part of speech section here, and we'll uncheck the other parts of speech, so that only a noun is selected. And we can see that there's a few more fine-tuning options here as well, but for most cases, the settings we just went over are the ones we'll typically configure in the node. So let's go ahead and re-execute the node to see how our results can change. And now if we open this node to view the results, we can already see that we have a more refined set of clusters. We have uh, nine instead of 18 for one, and we can see more clearly some of the high-level topics in our data set. And from this information, we can start creating a targeted classification schema for our analyst-driven analysis. And we can do this by clicking on Generate. And then we can choose to create some lists with the keywords for each cluster. Or in other words, we can create a word class dictionary that we could maybe use in our queries in a taxonomy. But we'll talk more about word classes and the taxonomy node in their respective videos. For now, we can exit this node and continue with our analysis. Thanks for watching the second session on data-driven analysis. Next up, we'll be going over sentiment analysis.